Hey guys, this is Sparks, and today I want to talk a little bit about one of the new features of the snapshot, specifically in a uh, command block, MBT, map making, editing sense. So many of you are probably aware at this point that a new kind of potion has been released called um, Lingering Potion, which creates this little particle cloud on the ground which slowly shrinks down in size. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that this is in fact an entity. If I press F3 and B, this allows me to generate a wireframe around any entities. So you can see if I throw this potion on the ground, there's a little wire box around it. These potions also have a little wireframe around them. You can summon this entity and you can do all sorts of things with it. So the summon command is very basically summon area effect cloud is the name of the entity. And then there's a couple of tags that it requires. So in this book here, I just have um, a list of all the tags. These will be in the video description. Um, so these are kind of the required tags. This one isn't hugely required. The reapplication delay basically tells it how often to give you uh, the effect when you're stood inside the cloud. So every 20 ticks or uh, every, I guess, second currently, uh, it will give you the effect again. Uh, the radius is how how wide the um, the area is. So two is an example. You need the F on the end there. Duration is the lifespan of the entity. When the duration reaches zero, it will um, disappear. Uh, the effect is the effect potion effect tag. I'll link the um, the uh, the wiki for potion effects MBT in the description, so you can see how to structure uh, an effect tag. Uh, there's the particle tag. is not necessary. Uh, by default, the MBT is uh, set to mob spell, which is the type of particle you'll see. Uh, but you can change this to generate other particles. Uh, there's the radius per tick, which is how quickly it shrinks. If you set this to 0, uh, 0, then it will not shrink in size. And then there's the radius on use, which again is kind of optional. Uh, it means that if um, if I throw another one of these, you'll see that this is sort of, it's slowly shrinking in size. But if I step into it, it will shrink uh, down. And that's basically the, uh, the radius per use is how much it shrinks um, with each with uh, with each uh, co consummation of the effect by an entity. Uh, so there's some pretty cool stuff you can do with this, um, partially for marking, uh, like creating little effect puddles and things, but partially to do some other crazy stuff. So um, for, for example, you can, you can summon these using a command block to contain multiple potion effects. So this contains speed and regeneration. Right now I only have fire resistance. If I stand in here, uh, you'll see that I get speed and regen too. Um, and you'll also notice that it isn't shrinking very quickly when I stand in it. And this is because I removed um, the, um, the this uh, tag here. The uh, radius on use tag has been removed. So just the only change that I really made to this, other than setting the radius here to 2, is that I set the effects tag here to contain not 1, which is the uh, original speed effect, but 2. So you can see there's 2 tags here for different potion effects and you can apply apply as many potion effects as you like to this um, something else you can do is you can change the particle displayed uh, let me just get rid of those okay so um, using the particle command tag here you can choose any of the particles you can summon using slash particle to change how it looks. So you can see here I'm using mob spell ambient which creates this sort of rainbow effect this would be really cool if you have a cloud and you don't want people to know what effect it gives you. So uh, this one here, for example, gives me speed, but I wouldn't be able to tell that by looking at it. So it kind of a hit and miss kind of thing. But now we're going to get kind of more interesting. So here we have a permanent cloud. So I've done two things here. First of all, I've removed the radius per tick tag, which means it doesn't shrink in size. And secondly, I've set its duration to uh, this number here. This is the largest um, that a uh, an integer can be in Minecraft. Uh, that's the equivalent of 3.6 years of leaving the game running. That's 3.6 years of the game being open and the entity being loaded. So I think that's pretty long. Unfortunately, there's no way of making it infinitely permanent, but I th think about three and a half years is not bad. Uh, so the duration and the um, radius per tick tag being modified like that creates this completely permanent entity which will hang around here and generate these cloud particles. Uh, I created the cloud particles by putting cloud in the particle setting here, uh, and that'll just stay there for three and a half years, <laughs> uh, which is pretty good, basically forever. You can also make them completely invisible. So uh, this one here is going to be around forever. I've set its duration tag very high. It doesn't have a shrink tag, but it's also invisible. Um, now, you can't um, actually 
stop these from summoning a particle. Uh, they always have to summon a particle. However, the take particle is completely invisible. It doesn't seem to render anything. So you can use this to create an entirely invisible thing. If I press F3B again to hide the hitbox, you can't see it, that it's there at all. It's just completely invisible. It's only because we have F3B up that we can see this information, um, which leads on to some pretty interesting things. Uh, oh, you can also make a, a tag, a cloud that doesn't give you a potion effect. So if I stand in this one here, you can see it's not giving me any effects at all. And that's simply done by removing the um, the effect tag. You can actually see this is a very simple tag here. There's only a couple of things in here, um, which is pretty neat. Now, I'm excited to see how this is going to be used uh, because let's compare um, what's usually used for tracking currently and one of these. So I very often for tracking use a custom named invisible armor stand. So let's summon one of those here. You can't see it, but if we go into game mode 3, you can see that it's there. And alternately, you could use one of these infinite clouds. So um, I'm actually going to get rid of this, um, the effect give. I don't think I actually want that. Uh, but here we have a very long duration um, entity with a radius of 0 0.001, um, which is very small, uh, with the same sort of custom name. So I'll send on that one next to it. And you can see that while this one is visible with F3B, it's invisible like this. And the really cool thing about this is the invisible armor stand has a hitbox. I can't place a block directly behind it. I'm right clicking right now. I can place to either side, but I can't right click here because the, the entity is blocking the way with its hitbox. But this cloud doesn't have a hitbox at all. You can even place blocks inside it uh, without it having a problem, which is quite, quite unique for an entity, really. And I think um, I would like to do some tests, and I'll probably release a lectures in the lab coats testing video soon, looking at the lag the lag effects between the two. But if you consider something, even though this armor stand is invisible, it is still being rendered. It it has several parts to it. It's being generated by the game, and armor stands do cause a little bit of lag, even if they're invisible. They're being rendered. Now this this thing here, it has no hitbox. It has no no assets or anything that it needs to load. It's just it's just a completely placeholder entity which could be pretty amazing for um for example um a lot of my, my my systems have got these little tracker armor stands and they stop you being able to place things so in certain situations i think this could be very useful especially for scanning things around a player because if you put one of these invisible armor stands in the head of a player then um you cannot um you can't place blocks or break blocks um or anything like that so something like this could be very very handy for that sort of situation. I wonder if I can spectate these clouds. I cannot spectate the clouds, um, the area effect clouds. So I'm gonna do some experiments with this. I think there may be a video sometime in the next couple of days where I do some like um, tests between the two to see which one is less game heavy, like um, uses less power in the game. But uh, I think the area effect cloud stands to potentially carry. Uh, quite a large part, uh, a large role for map makers. In certain situations, it could be really good. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on it through the continuation of the 1.9 snapshot releases, but provided they don't make any huge changes, this could be really, really handy as a as a, a tracking entity, <laughs> which is probably not what they wanted it to be used for, but God damn it, I'm going to use it. So thank you very much for listening to me for the last eight minutes or so. Um, I hope you find this interesting and come up with some cool ideas. Uh, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.